Hello, little scientists. Let's sing. The itsy bitsy scientist sat down and took a look. She wrote down what happened in her notebook. She wrote down what she saw with her super special pen, so the itsy bitsy scientist could do it all again. Hello, little scientists. Today we're going to talk about the most amazing thing in the world: life. Hey, Strider. You know what science studies life? Oh, oh, I know. Biology is a study of living things. That means plants. Animals, bugs, and even tiny creatures we can't see. That is a great answer, Strider. Yes, biology is the study of life, and today we're going to learn about four very special things that all living organisms have in common. Are you ready? I'm so ready! Yeah! Let's start with this plant. Can we say it's alive? I don't know. It doesn't look alive to me. Hello, plant. Are you alive? Oh, you're so funny, Strider. Plants can't talk, but they are alive. All living things have four things in common: they can breathe, they can eat, they can grow, and they can have little babies. So plants have tiny seeds that grow into big plants that need air and water to survive. So, Strider, this plant is alive. All right. Now let's talk about animals. This is my friend Horsey. Horses are big animals that like to live on the farm. Wow! Are they fast? They are super fast, and after all of that running, they get hungry and they need carrots and hay and grass so they can grow big and strong, just like we need food to grow big and strong. And I bet they breathe air too. They definitely breathe air, and guess what? They also have families. Horses can have baby horses called foals, and they watch them grow big and strong. Wow, that's so cool! It really is. Now let's talk about something really tiny: microbes. They're so tiny, in fact, that you need a special tool called a microscope to even be able to see them. Wow, I love tiny things. Do they have legs like me? <laughs> Not exactly, Strider. And guess what? Microbes can be really good for you, like the ones in your tummy that help you digest food, or they can be really bad, like the ones that can get on your hands and make you sick. So that's why we always have to wash our hands. <laughs> oh, washing hands is important. I love to spin a web of soap bubbles. <laughs> You're so silly, Strider. <laughs> So, friends, today we learned that all living things, whether they're big horses or small plants or tiny microbes, are a part of biology. They all eat, breathe, grow, and have families. So, Strider, what was your favorite living thing from today? I think horses are so cool. What about you, Nina? I like them all. How about you go and explore outside, little biologists? Maybe you'll find a tiny worm or a big tree. Whatever you do, have fun exploring. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come on, everybody, let's learn about biology together. A biologist studies living things like you and me. A biologist studies living things like you and me. They study animals and plants from the tallest tree to the tiny ant. A biologist studies living things like you and me. Hello, little scientists. Huh? There's something behind me, and it's hopping really fast. Oh, <laughs> that's a frog. Oh, I love frogs. They can be green, and they like to hop around. And guess what? They make a really fun noise. They go ribbit, ribbit. You try, ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> oh, frogs are so cool! But wait a second. How does a baby frog turn into a big frog? <laughs> Let's find out. First, frogs start out as eggs, tiny little eggs that live in the water. Then. They hatch and turn into tadpoles with a cute little tail, so they can swim in the water. But wait a second, frogs don't have tails. 
Well, that's why they turn into tiny little froglets, where they still have a tail, but they also have arms and legs. And finally, they turn in to big green frogs that can hop around on land. <laughs> that was so much fun. Ah, I love water. It's so refreshing. I love water too. Hey, do you think these plants like water? Well, they're alive, so of course they do. But it doesn't have a mouth, so how does it drink the water? Well, you see this long part right here? That's called a stem. Water is first absorbed through the roots, and then the stem helps to transport the water all throughout the plant. Hmm, I still don't understand how it drinks the water. <laughs> That's okay. How about we do an experiment where we color the water and see where it moves in the plant? Oh yeah, that's a great idea! This will be so much fun! Let's start by making colored water. Strider, what's your favorite color? I like red, like a bright red race car that goes vroom! <laughs> that's a great color choice. What's yours, little biologist? Mine's blue. So how about we start by making one red and one blue. So first, we're going to add three drops of red. One, two, three. <laughs> and then, we're going to add three drops of blue. One, two, three. Do you see how the water changes colors? Now we have one red and one blue. And now it's gonna take some time, but the stem is gonna absorb the water, kind of like a straw. But what should we do while we wait? Oh, I know, let's have a dance party. That's a great idea. So do you see how the blue water changed this flower to blue? And how the red water changed this flower to red? That's because plants drink water. So what would happen if we changed the color of the water to say, orange? That's right, it would change the flower to orange. Good job. <laughs> Maybe you could try this experiment at home with your favorite colors. Maybe green, or yellow, or even purple. That's a great idea, Strider. Whatever you do, have fun experimenting, little biologists. Goodbye. <laughs>
Always be curious, little biologists. Goodbye.